Hello, everyone. Welcome to the next episode of The Ship It Show. We are so excited to explore this insanely canon ship. Fans voted overwhelmingly for Batcat, which is super exciting. It's cat and mouse. It's an old story. It's a fantastic story. There's so much to learn about it. And who better to be on this episode than me than me no. <laughs> no do you hear that do you hear that laugh do you know who that laugh oh, is wow i know that <laughs> that's kevin conroy hello everybody <laughs> um and i may be biased but he is the only batman for me he, oh, thank <laughs> he is, always will be and of course and you're my harley you're my oh i could turn into a bat yo i could turn into a bat okay we'll get back to that <laughs> um oh, and of course none of us literally not one of us would be here talking about what we're doing and the roles we played without oh, oh my gosh i'm so excited she's here andrea romano Yes. So happy to my be here. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys yeah. both so much for coming. We're so excited and delighted and honored mm-hmm. to have you because in in the world of shipping and imagination and comics, when people read comics now, they hear the voices, they recognize their favorite voices in these comics. And it's this full circle of um, geekdom and pop culture. And it it would not be what it is without you two. So I'm so grateful that you guys are here. And I'm going to hand over the mic a little bit. I want, I want you guys to talk about your first meeting and uh, your, your origin story together. You, you two. I love story. Your love story. Because <laughs> it is a love story. Okay. Um, I was casting Batman the Animated Series. Uh, this would be, what, 1991, Kevin? Yes. 91. And um, Bruce Tim hired me to do it. And I'm convinced that I got the gig because Bruce Tim simply didn't know any other voice directors yet. So I lucked into this gig and I auditioned, as you can imagine, for something as important as Batman and the series and bringing something to life that hadn't been really depicted other than Adam West version of Batman, um, the live action series in the 60s, it had not really been the Dark Knight. And so we needed a Batman that was special, that was not just uh, someone who did voices, but I needed someone whose background was in acting, ideally. So I searched and I went to all the agencies, as one always does. And um, I think I heard, let me just think now. I heard well over a thousand auditions for the voice of Batman himself. And then I think I brought it down to about 150 for callbacks because some of the people I just didn't know. And if you're about to do a series, I think we knew by that time that we were going to do 65 episodes. And so if you're going to do 65 episodes, you want to be sure you have the right person in the room with you, someone that you can direct, someone that's going to enjoy the process. And so I had done all these auditions and I was in the callbacks and Bruce, Tim and I were saying, well, this actor could do it and this actor could do it. And this, but none of them were like, yeah, there's Batman. And then I spoke to my dear, dear, dearly departed friend, Anthony Barneo, who was a, um, an agent, a theatrical agent. And I said, I'm having a hard time. He was my roommate. I'm having a hard time casting Batman. Anybody you can think of that I should see. And he said, there's this great, stage actor, Juilliard trained actor with a gorgeous voice. He's got lots of on-camera credits as well. His name is Kevin Conroy. I think he's at least worth seeing. And Kevin walked into the room, and I think Kevin, it was during the callbacks, wasn't it? Yes, you'd already, it you, so it was I, the yeah. second or third round of callbacks. Right, right. So we were, we were really down to the last choices, and we had heard so many interpretations of the same copy and the same character, and Kevin walked in, and the first thing he said before he even got into the copy was, I, I, I sort of see this Batman Bruce Wayne guy a, a bit like Hamlet. And right away, I breathed a sigh of relief because this was an actor speaking about uh, his training, his education, his knowledge of theatrical everything. And, and that makes a great deal of sense, that Hamlet being this Vent about vengeance, about a murdered father. It, it all makes sense. And then Kevin and we, at the time, we were deciding that we wanted um, both a a slight different voice for Bruce Wayne than Batman. 
And um, and Kevin opened his mouth and spoke as Bruce Wayne. And, and we were making him kind of, for lack of a better term, somewhat foppish. Um, and that was excellent. And then he broke into the Batman voice. And I just even thinking about it, I'm just talking about it, I'm getting goosebumps on my arm. <laughs> the hair on my arm was raising because it was like, oh, my God, oh, that's it. That's what we've been looking for is someone to be able to to bring all those things we know about Batman to the fore with the voice. There's all kinds of physical stuff, as you guys both know, because you're actors, you know, voice actors, and you know how much physical stuff goes into it. Kevin was a baby in the voiceover field, but he was an actor. And that I can deal with, that I can direct. I can teach him mic technique in a day. I can't teach him how to act in a day. And so he he did this magnificent audition and Bruce Tim and I were like, woohoo, drinking tonight. <laughs> we found him. And then and then I want to tell this really quick story and then I want Kevin, I want you to tell your side of this. But um, as Kevin and I started working together and we did uh, you know a couple of sessions and you know Kevin didn't even really know how to give a level yet or what fight walla was or what all those sound effects were that you guys know how well you know, how, how to do it so well. And um, so Kevin, I would say at the beginning, give me a couple of, of uh, fight sounds, you know, <laughs> throw a couple of punches, throw a couple of batarangs, and he would do that. <laughs> and then I say, take a few punches. <laughs> and he would do that. And then because I loved his voice so much and I was already falling deeply in love with him, oh. I said to him, maybe the third session, I said, and now say my name and character. And he said, oh. Actually, you say it. He said, Andrea. And that was it. <laughs> love, 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 love. It was say just, my name. Say my name. Oh, me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Say my name. Oh. Kevin Conroy. Say my name. So that was my first experience with Kevin Conroy. Now you tell your side of the story, Kevin. Oh, my well, God. I, I love I that had, story. I had never done. I mean, it was really one of those weird actor stories where, you know, an actor gets it based on the the purely on the strength of the audition it wasn't about agents knowing anybody or any kind of behind the scenes kind of finagling. I, I had done no animation before. Um, I'd only done commercial voiceovers in theater and on camera television, but I'd never done any kind of animation work. Um, I didn't even know Batman had never been an animated show. I assumed it had been. Um, I really went in with a completely clean slate and it was really a bizarre, one of those sort of amazing things where the actor's background totally fits the role that he's walking into. Because I came from, as Andrea was saying, Juilliard and Shakespeare and the Greeks and Joe Papp at the public theater. I mean, heavy, heavy, heavy on the, like a 19th century kind of theater background, but steeped in the classics. But I'd played Orestes, I'd played Achilles, I'd played... Uh, Laertes and Lysander, I'd done all these classical roles who are these epic, tragic heroes. And what is the one role I go in for for my first animated audition? It is the <laughs> epic, classic, dark hero of the animated world. It's Batman. So what I brought to it was my background. And I said, as Andrea was saying, I, I said to them, you know, my only background in all of this is the Bruce, is the, is the Adam West show and, and Bruce... Um, uh, Tim immediately said, we love Adam, but that's not what we're doing. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, erase your memory. I said, well, well, my take on it is it's like you're telling the Hamlet story. That's the story you're telling. And, um, and Bruce said, well, no one's ever said that before. But it was just, it was an unusual situation where like 15 years of preparation had led to this audition this this unique role for me and i happened to be in la i was based in new york at the time i happened to be in la shoot, shooting a pilot for a series so it was all so um like destined it was just fate totally that nervous. it all happened were you huh? nervous for the audition i you know i really wasn't because I, I had nothing to lose because i didn't know this world at all this i didn't know who bruce wow. tim was i didn't know who you were i didn't know who right. eric ragomsky i didn't know right. you know i wasn't yeah. nervous at all because That's why he was so authentic he wasn't it's why you know, i was right. it's yeah. why i was so free to experiment yeah. i think with the voices 
It's um, kind of like my story with Beast Boy. I didn't know no. nothing about anything in life. No. So. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, yes, I, I do think we were all destined to be these characters. So I'll give you that, Beastie. I'll give shout, you that. Shout out to Andrea for casting the man, the boy, and the babe. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Set sail with us on the Shipper Show. Find us where you find your favorite podcast. Because we's all about the love, yo. We's all about the love.